This is going to be objective four. We are going to simplify rational expressions. Explain to me what the word rational means. I agree. Able to be written as a fraction. So when I'm talking about rational expressions, I'm specifically talking about fractions. Sorry. Okay, I'm specifically talking about fractions. Okay. And I'm not just talking about simplifying 5 over 10 to 1 half. I'm talking about algebraic fractions, binomials and trinomials and monomials in fractions. Okay? So repeat after me. Factor cancel smush. Oh, sound like you love algebra. Factor cancel smush. You're not convincing me, and we'll just stay here all day until you do it. Factor cancel smush. Factor cancel smush. Thank you, Frankie. Factor cancel smush. I really believe in this. Factor cancel smush. So here's the name of the game. We are going to factor what we can. We are going to cancel out what we can. And then we're going to just smush it all together. Okay? We're just going to smush it all together. So that's your method of what we're doing today. So here's example one. There are five examples total, just in case you're keeping count. So first of all, do we have a rational expression? Rational means fraction, so do we have a fraction? Yes, we have a rational expression. Okay. Secondly, we're going to factor what we can. So here's where I told you the other day, you've got to understand whether it can go further or not go further. Okay. So let's look at each piece and each part. Let's start with the 4y. Can 4y be broken apart? It's a monomial. Can it be broken apart? I'm thinking like GCF, trinomials, difference of two squares. No, okay. So 4y is a monomial. It's done. So I'm just going to bring it down. How about y minus 3? Is it done or can it factor? It's done. So I'm just going to bring it down. How about y plus 4? It's done. How about this y? It's done. It's a monomial. Okay. What about this trinomial? Can it factor? Maybe. We can try. Okay. So trinomials break into two binomials. So when I factor this, this will be y and y. And what and what? Well, I got to get something that's going to multiply to be 6. So it's got to be either 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. And Julie says negative 3, positive 2. Does that make sense to everybody? And if you're still struggling with factoring, okay, if you're still struggling with factoring, I highly recommend you go to a separate sheet of paper. And factor and check and try and erase and make your MA chart and do what you need to do. And then when you get your factors, you go back to your problem. Okay? So, step one, factor what we can. We factored what we could. We could factor the trinomial. Step two, we're going to cancel what we can. What can cancel? Very good. Y minus 3 and Y minus 3 can cancel. What do they make when they cancel? 
What's y minus 3 divided by y minus 3? Something. 1. It makes a 1, right? 2 divided by 2 is 1. Those cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Those cancel. y minus 3 divided by y minus 3 is 1. Okay? All right. Anything else can cancel? Or simplify? So here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's the second part to what confuses people, is you have to keep separate. You can only cancel monomials with monomials and binomials with binomials. What monomials do we have? 4y and y. Can I maybe simplify these two? These are on the outside. I like to say when things are on the outside, they're free. You can do what you want to with them. Does that make sense? Could I cancel those? You can. It's a monomial with a monomial. You could cancel. So you could take one away from there and one away from there. Okay? Now, binomials are different. Like, could I cancel these y's right here, the y that's in the y plus 4 and the y that's in the y plus 2? Why not? Right. In order to cancel a binomial, it's got to be the exact same binomial. It's on the inside. Does that make sense? So y plus 4, it's on the inside. It's protected. Somebody in um, second block, they said it. They think of it like it's in jail, okay? It's protected. You can't get to the y plus 2, and you can't get to the y plus 4 because they're on the inside. Does that make sense? But you could cancel the y minus 3s because they match exactly. Okay, so then factor what we can, cancel what we can. What's the last part? Smush. I love that word, smush. Just fun to say. Say it with me. Smush. Oh, yeah. Have a little fun. So we have a 4 left, we have a y plus 4 left, and we have a y plus 2. Any questions about that? Now, again, can I cancel this Y with this Y? No. Technically, this is inside a set of a parentheses. Even though I don't have a set, it's technically on the inside of a set of parentheses. Okay? You don't have to write it, though. If it's got multiple terms, does that make sense? If it's, like, got two terms or three terms, it's technically got a set of parentheses around it holding it together, protecting it, even if you don't write it, okay? So technically, this guy, could I cancel this 4 and this 2? No, technically this 4 is on the outside. The 4 is free, but the 2 is on the inside. It's protected. You can't get to it. It's locked in there, okay? So this is your final answer. Factor what you can, cancel what you can, Smush it all together. Any questions? <coughs> so, what can we factor? We can factor the trinomial on the top. So I want you to go ahead and do that. Can you factor anything on the bottom? Dylan? You're my factoring man. Anything on the bottom factor? I don't think, like, even though, and so I am going to, some people think you can take out an X because they both have X's, but they are two separate factors. So my question is, is can X minus 6 factor? No. Okay, so that one's done. Can X squared minus 9 factor? How? Say it again. Yeah, difference of two squares. Okay, so factor. Factor the trinomial. And factor your difference of two squares. Okay, very good, Frankie.
So the 5x is a monomial. It just comes down. This is a trinomial, and it can factor. Excuse my board. It's struggling today. So this will be x and x and what and what? Plus 3 plus 1. And then on the bottom, the x minus 6 comes down. And this is a difference of two squares. Tell me about a sum of two squares. Because some of us struggled on this on our test yesterday. Tell me about a sum of two squares. Give me an example of a sum of two perfect squares. How about x squared plus 25? Okay. What do we know about a sum of two squares? So does that mean, this is what a lot of us did on our test yesterday. X and X and plus 5 and plus 5. Does that work? It won't cancel. You know what people did? They did their check step. They went like this. And they went like this. Why did they do that? What's wrong with that? Plus 5 and plus 5 X don't cancel. That makes... 10x. Why did they mark through it? It's supposed to cancel, right? And so they thought, oh, it's supposed to cancel, so I'll just mark it out and it will cancel. A sum of two squares cannot factor. So I need you to remember that because you're going to see that on some of your problems. A sum of two squares cannot factor, but a difference can. And Frankie told us it would be x plus 3 and x minus 3. So, factor what we can. Check, check. Cancel what we can. What can cancel? X plus 3. And X plus 3. Okay, and what's the last part? Smush it all together. So, we have a 5X times quantity of X plus 1 over X minus 6 times X minus 3. And there's your answer. There is a little stipulation that goes with this, um, but I'm not going to get into that until we get back next week. I just want you getting the idea of what we're doing. Stipulation is you have to explain to the world, like, the world wants to plug in something for X. Does that make sense? Like, the world's going to, to evaluate this problem, they're going to plug in something for X. But... Not everybody in our world is as smart as we are. So I always say we have to kind of help the world out. We got to tell them, along with this problem, that X can be anything except two numbers. X can't be 6, and X can't be 3. Do you know why X can't be 6 and X can't be 3? And technically, x can't be negative 3 either, because if I look to the original question, x can't be negative 3 either. But, say it again. Well, they're on the bottom. What if I plugged a 3 in here? What's 3 minus 3? 0, right? And what's 0 times all that? What do we know about dividing by 0? can't do it. It's undefined. When zero is under the fraction bar, it's undefined. It's not possible. You cannot take something and divide by zero. Does that make sense? So we'll add our little stipulations in. Like this part right here, this is your answer. But this part over here is just kind of helping the world out that says that, you know, X can be anything you want it to be in the whole world, except it can't be these because it's going to make your denominator become zero if that happens. Does that make sense? So we'll add that in next week. This week, today, all I want you to do is just being able to factor cancel smush. Okay. My motto is, it's all fun and games until you try to divide by zero. Does everybody understand why you can't divide by zero? Yeah. You sure? Positive? All right. I'm going to let you try this one. On your own. Let's see what you can do with it.
So, would anyone like to give me some wrong answers? I would like a thousand wrong answers. Right now. I need a wrong answer. Gonna give me a wrong answer. Zero. That's probably not a right answer. Very good. Give me an answer that you got that you don't feel like is right. Okay. Any other wrong answers? Give me an answer that you don't feel like is correct. Okay. What's Jess think? Okay. Any other wrong answers? I love wrong answers. Give them to me. Or even if you feel like they're right. If you feel like your answer is right, give me a right answer. Anybody like either one of those answers? Are they similar? Can anyone say what's the difference in the two of them? One of them's got one X. How did, how did you get just that one X? Okay, so she saw that there was an x squared here. Where's this x squared? Is he a monomial or is he protected on the inside? He's a monomial. He's on the outside. He is free. Okay, where's this x? Oh, my goodness, he's free too. And if they're both free, if you got two x's here and one x there, can you take an x from each and simplify them just a little bit? So if you take an x away from here, you don't have any x's down there. And if you take an x away from there, how many you got left? One x there. Do you see where she got that? I actually think this is the correct answer. Okay. And this one's got this one's there. This one's there. You just had to go one little more step for it further. Okay. Does that make sense? So let me start from the beginning for those that didn't quite get there. So when I factored my trinomial. I'm going to make this x and x and minus 7 and plus 2. Any questions about that? The 7? Because um, 7 times 2 is 14. And then when you add a negative 7 and a positive 2, you get negative 5. Okay. And I do want you to understand, just because I don't have this much room as you do on your paper, you know, feel free to get a scrap sheet of paper out there and do your MA chart and, you know, do what you need to do. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to go there. So then on the bottom, and keep asking me questions. Questions are good. Okay. Remember how I told you last spring that I was teaching for about three weeks? And then finally, like, no one asked questions, no one said anything. And then finally one day someone just said, I don't understand what you're doing at all. And the rest of the class was like, oh, thank goodness. So don't forget, ask, ask me questions, okay? It's good. So when I factor the bottom, I get plus 4 plus 2. So far, so good? Okay. And then my x plus 2s can cancel. And then again, I got to look at my monomials, so I can take one away from there, and I can take that away from there. So I have an x on the top, and an x minus 7, and on the bottom I have a 4, and an x plus 4. Any questions on that? How many were able to get there? Good. How many would be able to get halfway there? That the x squared, what what Kirby had, yeah, yeah, and that's 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 great. Okay, so maybe on the next one you can get all the way there. So there is something specific about this. We have two examples left. Okay, 
There's something very important about this one. How can we factor it first? We're going to factor what we can, because the motto is factor, cancel, smush. GCF. Very good. What can we take out up top? An A and a B, right? We can take out an A and a B. So, take out an A, B up top. If I take out an A and a B up top, what would I be left with? B minus 5? Everybody good with that? If I take out the A, there's no A's left. And if I take out one of the B's, then I'm just left with a 1B. And then if I take out the A and the B, I'm just left with the 5. Okay? And then on the bottom, I have a 5 plus B, and I have a 5 minus B. Now, my question is, this is definitely going to be on your SOL. This right here. I promise you. Does anything cancel? Well, if you foiled it together, it wouldn't completely cancel it out. It'd be a difference of two squares. Does that make sense? Like it'd be 25 minus B squared. But we want it in factored form. But that's a good thought. So... I like this, okay? I don't want you to feel like if you're giving me wrong answers. So I want you talking. Someone said in second block, they're like, yeah, B minus 5, 5, um, five minus B. They cancel. Are they the same thing? This is a positive B, and this is a negative B. This is a negative 5, and this is a positive 5. They're not the same thing. But they could be, right? Like, what if I just switch the signs on this? What if I made this a positive and I made this, excuse me. What if I made this 5? It is a positive. Let's make it a negative and let's switch the sign here. Would it then match? I mean, it's written backwards, but is it still the same thing? This is a negative 5. That's a negative 5. That's a positive B. So my question is, what can I factor out that can switch my signs? What can I take out of something that can switch my signs? I can't just magically switch them. I can't just say, oh, let's just make it change signs magically. you got to actually do something. Does that make sense? What can I take out that can switch signs? What can I multiply by something that just switches signs? A negative one. Negative one. I can factor out a negative one. So I'm going to go back for like two seconds. Okay, and I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to put a negative 1 on the outside, okay? And so when I do that, would you rather me go ahead and write it the other way? Okay, when I just take out a negative from that 5, I'm left with a negative 5. And when I take out a negative, what's a negative divided by a negative? A uh, positive. Now these match. What do I do with this guy right here? Yeah, he just comes down. And it doesn't matter if you write him at the front or write him at the back. In second block, to be honest with you, I took this guy and had him over here and I had this guy over there. It doesn't matter. They're both down there on the bottom. Do you understand? Now, does everybody see that these two match? This is a positive B. This is a positive. If it makes you feel better, would it make anybody feel better if I wrote it like this instead? So it does match. So if it makes you feel better, write it so it matches exactly. No, you're not taking it out from both. You're only taking it out from this one. Because these are two separate factors. Does that make sense? And that's a good question. Somebody asked me that in second block as well. Okay? You're not going to take it out from both groups. You're just taking it out from this one group right here. Okay, I'm just factoring that one thing right there. The thing that I'm not factoring just comes straight down. Okay, so this 5 plus B right over here, he just drops down. Okay, so now these two cancel. So what do I have left? 
A, B on top. What's on the bottom? 5 plus B, what else do I have? And you know what? Generally, we do this. We put the negative out in front. Okay, and we just make it a negative fraction. And this will definitely be on your SOL, where you have to factor out a negative 1 to get things to cancel. Okay? Now, I will tell you, if it makes you feel better, if you want to write it like this, you can leave the negative 1 with the parentheses and leave your answer just like that. Okay? But on the SOL, it'll look like this. Okay? And what I'm going to explain to you is, you know, I think we had the discussion in Algebra 1 where, tell me, what fraction is this? Negative 1 half. Guess what? What fraction is that? Negative 1 half. What fraction is that? Negative 1 half. So when I have a negative 1 in front, it doesn't matter if you leave it in the bottom, in the denominator, if you put it up top in the numerator, or if you just throw it out in front. It makes the entire fraction negative. Okay? But here's what some people do. Some people get lazy, and some people do this. A, B over 5 minus B, and let's just stick, or 5 plus B, and let's just stick the negative in front. What is that? That's not right. Because what does that do? That makes it look like it's a negative 5. It's not a negative 5. Okay? If you're going to distribute and make that a negative 5, then by golly, you got to distribute and make that a minus B too. Does that make sense? So if I were you, I would write it like this with the parentheses and keep the negative one, or I would just throw the negative in the very, very front of the fraction. Okay? All right, one more, I think. And then we're going to go from there. So I'm going to get you started on this, and then I'm going to let you finish it. There you go, a couple hints. Seniors, if y'all want to go to lunch, you can go to lunch. Let me say this really quickly, and then I'll let you work till lunch, and then we'll talk about this when we get back from lunch. Okay? First of all, what's wrong with this problem? There's something. It doesn't look right. Yeah, the denominator is completely backwards. Have we factored stuff where, you know, normally when we have a trinomial and we factor it, we have an x squared first, and then we have a middle term, and then we have the end term. So here's what I'm going to say. First thing I would do is I would flip it around so it's the right way. But if I flip it around, you got to make it have the correct signs. If I flip this little baby around, what would it say? What is the x squared? It's negative x squared plus 3x plus 28. Now there's something else. Do we factor with a negative x squared in the front? Anything that I gave you on your test yesterday have a negative x squared in the very, very, very front? No. We don't like that. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're leading coefficient, the number that's in the very, very front, you want it to be positive. Okay? If you're in the lead, don't you think, would you be a positive person or a negative person if you're winning the race? If I'm winning the race, am I going to be positive? Heck yeah, I'm winning the race. Or am I going to be like, I'm winning the race, I'm negative. If you're in the front, you want to be positive. So I would factor out a negative 1 from that bottom first thing, okay? Then factor cancel smush. So see what you can do, and then we'll talk about it when we get back from lunch. All right, so let's finish this real quick, okay? All right, here we go. So if I switch this around, this will make negative x squared. And again, I encourage you to maybe do this on a separate sheet of paper so that you can show multiple steps, okay? From there, I'm going to go ahead and try to factor. So I'm going to factor the numerator into x and x and what and what? Plus 2 and minus 7. So far, so good. Someone said, is it okay if you put the minus 7 here and the plus 2 there? Yeah, that's fine. As long as one of them is an x plus 2 and one of them is the quantity of x minus 7. It's fine. Everybody with me so far? Now, here's the thing. On the bottom, I'm going to then, we don't like the leading coefficient to be negative. 
We like the one in the very, very front. So if that, that will give you an inclination to possibly take out a negative one. So if I take out a negative one, now here's what I'm going to tell you. Can I take out a negative one and split it into two parts at the same time? Can you go from one trinomial to three parts at one time? Remember my flag and breaking it into three parts? Can't do that. So somewhere on your scrap paper, you might want to factor the negative one out first. That will make a positive x squared. A negative divided by negative is a positive. This will make a negative 3x, and this will make a negative 28. From there, you can factor the trinomial into two parts. So it will be x and x and minus 7 plus 4. Any questions on what I did and how I factored? What cancels? X minus 7. So I'm going to just smoosh everything together. So this is x plus 2 over x plus 4. And what am I going to do with this negative 1? Put it out in front. Okay. Would it be okay if I just threw it on the bottom? No, because then it would look like a negative x. And that x is not negative. Okay. Now, what if I had, what if I gave it to the x and I gave it to the 4? Then that would be okay. But again, I don't want to get into confusion. So I would either throw it out in front or I would leave it with a set of parentheses in the bottom. Then I could count it right. Okay? Any questions on that? How many were able to get there? Good. How many were able to almost get there? Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do some practice. So we're going to start with this. Now, I only want you to start with, I'd like to get through all of these today. Um, but we're, let's just start with this. I want you to go to the boards or get a whiteboard. As you do them, I want to check them. Okay, so I want to see them. Any questions? So go to the boards. Y'all can come to the front board too if you would like. 